marketing management and now we will talk about module 44 in this module we will talk about ethical consideration for business markets and to introduce we will talk about ethical environment business ethics marketing and ethics ethics in global business analyzing ethical problems and then making ethics work so establishing a proper ethical conduct for employees and managers is an important yet difficult task. Recently both the business and general press have been filled with stories exposing ethical lapses in corporations across the world. In this module we will attempt to clarify the most important issues in global ethics and provide tools to help establish ethical guidelines for the marketing department. So we are talking about the ethical environment so any marketing department is operating in many environments which affects its ability to establish and maintain ethical conduct. These various influences are shown in figure 44.1 and this is the figure. So the marketing department is being is working in so many different kind of influences. Corporate environment is described as including formal administrative structure such as the organization chart and the assignment of authority responsibility and information flow. Formal administrative systems such as methods for controlling operations, evaluations and reward systems and the corporate culture. While corporate culture is defined as a learned relatively enduring independent system of meanings that classify, code, prioritize and justify activities both within the organization and towards the external environment, it has defined as a relevant. The Symbols and meanings of corporate culture are usually imperfectly shared by organizational members. The societal environment includes social relationships and cultural definition of life. Two of the most important aspects of this environment are the infrastructure such as technical, educational and research and government regulations. Because doing business outside the home country can so often be dependent upon cultural differences the figure 44.1 has specifically identified cultural influences as a separate item. The main element of the definition of culture includes these characteristics. First is that it is a shared set of beliefs. Second is it is learned and passed on from one generation to another. Third is it is used to distinguish one group from another. And the fourth one is it, it provides solution to problems every individual faces how he or she should properly relate to other individuals of the same or opposite sex, the physical world and the universe. The physical environment includes climate, geography, plant and animal life and natural resources. The view of the physical environment has a major impact upon what is considered proper behavior. For instance, citizens of Europe are far more concerned about air pollution than are most individuals in the People's Republic of China. Finally, the industry environment is also an important influence on the ethical behavior of the individual. Acceptable behaviors which become industry norms are often considered to be standards by which action should be judged. Competitive forces are often at the heart of questionable action taken by the individual. Now let us come to this topic of business ethics. Ethics means a standard of behavior, a conception of right or wrong conduct. Ethical principles are guides to moral or immoral behavior. Ideas of right and wrong are derived from religious beliefs as well as industry and professions, families, friends, school and the media. All of these influences help an individual develop a specific concept of morality and ethics. Business ethics is simply the application of foregoing ideas to business settings. Developing the proper guiding principles for business ethics has been the subject of discussion over many years. The three basic competing views of corporate responsibilities are the invisible hand, the head of the government and the hand of the management. The invisible hand assigns to business the sole responsibility for making profits within the law. In this conception, the marketplace will punish immoral behavior and the overall common good results from each firm's pursuing competitive advantage. Self-interest is the most important factor in this view. The hand of government view is described as a system in which corporations pursue economic objectives while governments and political processes force firms to set objectives which will result in their common well-being. 
the similarities of the invisible hand and the hand of government views are interesting in both morality and ethics are the responsibility of rules and incentives rather than independent judgment by individuals or corporations the third view called the hand of management assigns the corporation an important role in setting moral behavior and developing a corporate conscience this approach expects management not to ignore profit and business survival but to coordinate imperatives not deny their validity according to this view the presence of ethical or intelligent individuals will not ensure an ethical corporation therefore these standards must be structured to coordinate and organize the individuals from the purpose of achieving an overall moral responsibility although there remains some who would take the invisible hand position there appears to be a trend towards more corporate responsibility in nearly every part of the world the reason for this are self evident that we will discuss now the negative publicity resulting from revealed unethical behavior is swift and overwhelming negative reaction can boil up quickly in the form of protest and boycotts second as will be explained later in this module tighter regulations are being adopted by number of countries third some studies indicate that firms will emphasize ethical and socially responsible behavior have better financial performance although the opposite is not always true two basic approaches forms the basis for ethical thinking the first deontology embodies the view that ethical decisions follow absolute principles actions are inherently right or wrong independent of their consequences these principles are often derived from the religious base such as the tradition of judaism christianity and islam or from philosophies such as confucianism the most familiar derivative of deontology is kant's categorical imperative the categorical imperative requires that for an action to be proper it would have to be acceptable as general or a universal law all people are respected and an individual considers the decision both as a rule maker or a rule follower another approach is consequentialism also known as teleology which bases its judgment on any action on the goodness of its consequences the most well known form of this school is utilitarianism which favors action that generate the greatest good for the greatest numbers many managers use a version of the utilitarian principle in their ethical decision making since it is similar to the familiar cost benefit analysis in reality managers find it difficult to make decision based only on one school of ethics or another it is easy to see that applying the utilitarian principle runs into problems in such simple decisions as attempting to decide whether to make a large investment in new plant or equipment versus paying dividend to shareholders an analysis of cost and benefit is difficult when various stakeholders interests are in competition in addition the utilitarian principle might lead a manager to operate an unsafe insecticide plant which might benefit a large population with better crops and therefore better nutrition while harming a few hundred people located nearby the plant site utilitarianism often leads managers to ignore minority rights using deontology also creates problems when two universal principles conflict with one another for instance during war people are forced to choose between staying home to comfort the ill and aging elders and fighting for the nation the third approach is that of virtue theory of ethics in which individual character plays a major role the teaching of aristotle are at the heart of this theory which states that individuals should learn good habits in order to live a virtuous life further virtuous people should be role models as well this approach has been criticized because it does not provide clear rules and decision making methods a slightly different view describes four methods of ethical reasoning one is virtue utilitarian rights and justice the utilitarian and virtue approaches have been already explained the right method says an action is ethical when basic human rights are respected here again it is difficult to balance the various stakeholders right in the justice method an attempt is made to distribute benefits and cost fairly the major problem with this approach is similar to that of utilitarianism in which it is difficult to measure benefits and cost and hard to agree on which group should be the recipient of each now we will talk about marketing and ethics so marketers often rely on simple rules or maxims such as those shown in figure 44.1 
by its very nature b2b marketing places the buyer seller relationship at its center many ethical issues arise from the dynamics of the relationship so these are some ethical maxim for uh, marketing do unto others as you would have them do unto you would i be embraced if the media publicized my decision good ethics is in, is in the firm's long term best interest would colleagues view the action as proper when in doubt don't in addition there are issues related to product pricing marketing communication channels of distribution and market research a list of possible eth- ethical issues which face b2b marketer is presented in table 44.2 so these are some of those issues what happens in selling in the selling function many difficult ethical problems emerge an obvious one is bribery in some country bribery is practically non existent and is legally and culturally frowned upon but in others payment ranging from a small dash or grease payments to large special commissions have been the norm in one of the press release secretary general of united nations cited world economic forum data and claims that the global cost of corruption is at least 5% of the world gdp a says person confronted with possible bribery has an ethical decision to make depending upon home country and the host country laws and customs both front stage and back stage culture exist in every country front stage culture includes the standards normal proper way of doing things that insiders are willing to share with outsiders it is easy for a visiting business person to determine what front stage culture is about this includes the question of formality versus informality in addressing new acquaintances gift giving traditions the relationship between social engagement and business negotiations and so on what is more troubling is backstage culture defined as knowledge that insiders see as a standard way of doing things that they are not willing to share with outsiders insiders may not want to share knowledge because the activities may be illegal or because the special knowledge gained gives the insider a competitive advantage very often most carefully guarded backstage cultural activity is the bribe or the so called commission the distinction is made between dash or grease payment and the large scale bribery the former are small payments such as those made to custom officials in airports these kinds of traditional payments are not violation of the law in most countries in the case of bribery regulations in developed countries may obviate the ethical issues what is illegal is clearly unethical and this makes the manager's decision an easy one research shows that the gift giving can be effective tool for b2b marketers with more expensive gifts gifts with more expensive gifts relatively more effective in generating a positive and sustained increase in customer intents to repurchase and actual sales some industrial buyers follow a firm policy to accept no gift while some others have policy which limit the value of a gift to a certain amount usually small firms have no limits on gifts gifts are also fraught with dangers in foreign markets there happened a number of embarrassing instances where an uninformed sales person gave inappropriate gifts such as a gold bracelet from tiffany to his saudi customer's wife neither customary nor acceptable in saudi world insisted that his japanese counterpart open a gift in his presence embarrassing since it is not customary and provide a lock to a buyer in china considered a symbol of bad luck judgment is also required in deciding upon entertainment or providing favors taking customers to lunch or dinner or to a concert or to a sporting event certainly is within the ethical bounds of nearly every society but other entertainments may tax the ethical limits and should be reviewed carefully the question of favor is more complex in china the concept of ganaxi is culturally ingrained this means developing personal relationships by doing favors for another party and thus obligating him her the other then feels he she should do reciprocal favors gunakshi is a fact in china and in number of other societies as well and must be viewed as a necessary part of doing business in the later part of this module we will discuss ways of responding to various ethical challenges such as this misrepresentation and or overselling a product especially by puffing up specific aspects in a not entirely accurate way or by omitting possible critical problems also create ethical issues in the selling function 
individual also face conflict of interest not only because they may be required to sell products which are not suited for a particular client but also because some agents and distributors may handle competing products finally in the selling area compensation and bookings can create ethical problems most sales people are well aware of the most effective way to increase their compensation and this is certainly within the prescribed limits of any ethical system however when sales are manipulated to yield unjustified compensation ethical issues come to the fore in one case a firm owned by a single proprietor was about to sell to a large multinational the owner instructed his sales people to generate phantom orders to increase the order book and therefore the acquisition price by the multinational sales people were compensated on unreal sales and therefore participated in this unethical behavior now let us look at the product and then talk about the ethics so marketers must be primarily concerned with the safety of their product so this is what we are talking about ethical issues often come to the fore when buyers are unaware of potential safety problems which may result from the use of a manufacturer's product in b2b marketing most governments do not establish laws and governmental agencies to protect buyers the rules of caveat emptor buyer beware is generally applied to business buyers this place an additional ethical burden on suppliers of business products to be sure their products are safe when used in proper way in some cases instructions must be supplied in local language and even in sign languages when the installer or service people are illiterate the second product area is that of obsolescence or elimination while slugging of product have been recommended by peter drucker and others for many years an ethical issue is how quickly products are eliminated or made obsolete a corollary issue is that of follow on service of these products in some cases the firm eliminate a product and also makes no arrangement for supplying spare parts or services while it may seem obvious that this can create negative reactions in the marketplace some firm neglect this important assurance while not specifically a marketing problem the environmental impact caused by manufacturing may be weighted in the decision by a customer to choose one product over another in building products industry for instance some architects are now asking for detailed information about manufacturing processes of interior walls drywall or gypsum board in order to establish whether a particular product meet established green standards Disposal can also pose a difficult problem for marketers. It is an integral part of the overall product cycle and products must be designed with disposal in mind. The next thing that now we are talking about is advertising. That is this red box. Advertising is a large area in which ethics standards need to be applied. Ordinarily, puffery of product is expected in consumer advertising. But in business marketing, generally speaking, this will backfire. Nevertheless some managers who have spent the majority of their careers in the consumer area often feel the need to over emphasize benefits in advertising a new area of concern is the violation of confidential information some business marketers often collect a great deal of personal information about consumers and potential consumers through the internet the use of this information must be carefully thought through if ethical standards are not to be violated the third component of of marketing mix that is the pricing in this area of pricing obvious illegal activities such as price fixing are prohibited by anti trust laws in most developed countries and we are talking about this red box even in the countries of developing world where anti trust laws are not enforced per se price fixing is prevented if harm comes to participant who make their homes in countries where anti trust laws are strictly enforced reciprocity is an interesting problem this simply means giving preference to a vendor who is also a customer in a hypothetical example general electric may be selling plastics to an electronics manufacturer while also buying computers from that same firm in this case a salesman might be tempted to use that relationship to gain an advantage with the electronic firm an unscrupulous buyer at ge might threaten to cut off computer purchases unless the electronic firm purchase plastics from the company in many firms this practice is frowned upon and even specifically prohibited 
by the firm's code of ethics. However, it is sometimes described as one of the marketing tools in basic texts. Since business marketers often are required to provide sealed bids for a contract, they should have confidence that these prices are not shared with others. However, in public bidding, that is tendering, it is expected that all bids will be revealed. The timing of this discussion is often a sticking point. An unethical buyer might share pricing with a supplier before bids are officially opened and an ethical problem may arise for the salesperson given the special look at the pricing of his or competitors. Unjustified price discrimination and unfair pricing occurs when a firm decides to price differently for the same class of customers buying the same quantity. While this kind of discrimination is illegal in many countries, problems can arise where pricing discrimination is used unfairly from one country to another. At the extreme, this can cause the shipment of grey goods back to an unwanted market. International trade seems to be plagued by questionable invoicing resulting in money laundering. It is a rare international business person who has been approached by some firms asking for inflated invoices as a way of transferring funds out of the particular country. A similar but not as frequently encountered problem is transfer pricing, where prices are set artificially high in order to avoid taxation in a particular market. Now let us talk about distribution. A vexing problem is, uh, is attempting to set the same requirements of and give the same benefits to distributors around the world. So this is what we are talking about. Meeting local market conditions can often result in hodgepodge of distribution policies. It is important that the firm apply its ethical standards to distribution policies in various markets. Finally, related to the bribery discussion before, inflated commissions should be viewed as suspect by any manufacturer's marketing department. Some countries have stringent laws which require that Accounting procedures be in place to detect unusually high commissions which may eventually result in bribes. Now let us talk about the marketing research. So respondents' participation in research must be entirely voluntary and that it is unethical to mislead them in order to gain their cooperation. Respondents must be told that their responses will be held in strict, in strict confidence and their identity will be anonymous. Respondents must not be harmed in any way by the research process and should be informed if recording devices or other form of observation which may not be evident are being used. Researchers should be truthful about their skills and experiences. They should take care to design and conduct research in the most cost effective way. Researchers should be careful to, to provide security for the data and provide findings only supported by the data. Researchers also should clearly define work they are doing which is not related to research. We will talk about personnel. A firm must be careful in applying requirements for hiring individual. Discrimination is prescribed by law in many countries and yet discrimination may be the best course of action in particular markets. For instance, it would not be feasible to hire a woman as a salesperson in Saudi Arabia. Nevertheless, the proper application of laws and ethics is required in choosing employees. Some firms in the quest to reduce cost have established unsafe or unfair working conditions. While this does not impact directly on the international marketing person's area of responsibility, it does affect the ability of the marketers to sell product in those markets where ethical concerns are important. Closer to the marketing responsibility is the treatment of local salesperson, other marketing specialists and clerical staff. While personnel policies may not transfer completely from the home office, reasonable expectations of employees should be considered when setting local policies. Ethical conflict occurs when individuals see their duties towards one group as inconsistent with, the with their duties towards another, including one's own self. The most important conflicts found are balancing corporate interest against the interest of customers, self, society and subordinates in that order. Multinationals have to maintain higher levels of social and environmental responsibility because of the severe corporate reputation effect of lapses in these areas. Matters impacting the firm's reputation should not be left to the discretion of 
national subsidiaries but should be coordinated centrally at headquarters who should decide a global set of norms. The five most frequently occurring categories of ethical problems are cultural differences, gifts, favors and entertainment, pricing practices, questionable commissions to channel members and large scale bribery. There is no question that there are different understandings of corruptions in various markets. The wildly varying environment in countries throughout the world have led some to postulate that no one set of ethical guidelines can be established for marketing people which will be effective in every market. This leads inevitably to cultural ethical relativism which contradicts the idea that there are universal moral truths. Cultural relativism is based on the idea, idea that since cultures have varied practices, any one of these practices may be acceptable. For instance, if in one culture, large bribes are a matter of course, while in another no bribes are permitted in gaining contracts, cultural relativism would say that no rules regarding bribes would be proper. Cultural relativism says that if a society is living up to its own moral standards, that is all that is required of it. It does not allow for the idea of moral progress and changes for the better. Now let us look at the role of ethics in global business. However, accepting whatever prevails in the host country is a mistake because this can result in both corruptions and public relation disasters and substitute unmitigated relativism for good sense. As we have seen earlier in this module, Absolute adherence to one theory or, or another does not provide a manager with the guidance required to face ethical problems he or she encounters in the conduct of business. This is especially true when varying cult cultural standards are at play as well. Now let us look at the levels of ethical norms. So Donaldson and Dunphy 1999 described the following levels of ethical standards or norms. At the most basic level are hyper norms fundamental rights acceptable to all cultures and organizations. Second are consistent norms which are more culturally specific. They must be consistent with hyper norms. However, most corporations ethical code fall within this category. The third level is called the moral free space. Here we find norms that are inconsistent with some of the legitimate norms described in the second level yet are often expressions of a strongly held cultural beliefs. Moving even further away are illegitimate norms. These are the norms which are incompatible with hyper norms. Using this approach, hyper norms relate to basic practices such as price gouging. Price gouging in markets where there are no alternatives or using slave labor to manufacture products. But the existence of moral free space allow managers to adopt where the norms of a particular country conflict with consistent norms in the home country but not with the overriding hyper norms. This approach allows managers to avoid the dangers of ethical relativism which establishes no standard whatever while allowing for adoption of local cultures when the adoption does not violate basic moral standards. Now analyzing the ethical problems, when a manager faces a problem which may raise ethical issues, he or she should be able to apply guidelines which can help in decision making. So this figure 44.2 shows the process of analyzing an ethical question. So this is the ethical question, then comes hyper norms, no and move here, yes you pass through this, this way and then we reach here. An ethical question should first be tested against the hyper norms which form the bedrock of ethical thinking. Violations of these hyper norms would lead to rejecting a possible course of action as unethical. If the action is permissible when compared to consistent norms or falls into moral free space, it would be subjected to a review in terms of utility. That is the benefits versus the cost, rights, whether human rights are respected and justed related to whether the benefits and cost are fairly distributed. Should the action provide positive answers when viewed from the basis of utility, rights and justice, the action proposed would be ethical. Should the action create negative results when viewed from these three perspectives, it, it would be unethical. Should the answer be mixed, a manager would have to balance the concern of all stakeholders as related to utility, rights and justice before deciding on a course of action.
Now, how to make ethics work? In response to the need for more consistent ethical behavior, corporations have attempted to institutionalize basic corporate values. One very obvious response has been the development of code of ethics. But the mere existence of code of ethics is generally ineffective in implementing ethical behaviors among managers. While it is important to have a code of ethics, it is more important that top management makes ethical behavior a priority. There are two approaches to corporate integrity strategy. The first approach is emphasize compliance, which is based on avoiding litigation and liability. A firm pursuing this approach establishes rules for employees hoping to direct employee behavior through the threat of punishment. The second approach is based on individual integrity, emphasizing employees' responsibility for proper conduct. In this approach, the firm supplies clear codes of conduct, training for employees, audit and control to ensure that standards are being met. Here, the top management has a critical role to play in establishing the proper ethical climate and behavior. It must integrate ethical core values into the organization's corporate culture. An effective strategy must take the following points into consideration. First, the guiding values and com commitments make sense and are clearly communicated. Second, company leaders are personally committed, credible and willing to take actions on the values they espouse. These values are integrated into the normal channels of management decision making and reflected in the organization's activities. Company systems and structures support and reinforce core values. Managers throughout the company have the decision making skills, knowledge and competence to make ethically sound decisions on a day to day basis. To make ethics work within a corporation, it is important that the training program be established. Some firms also have appointed an ethics officer or and ethics committee. Many firms conduct ethics audits to, to compare actual behavior with the established company standards. In order to implement truly ethical behavior, a firm must establish a comprehensive program, including the code of ethics, employee training, and an ethics officer as well as audits of conduct. Associations as well have established codes of ethics. SOMR, a worldwide market research association, has a long and detailed code of ethics, as does the Chartered Institute of Marketing and the American Marketing Association. So, to conclude in this module, we have covered the various approaches to corporate responsibility. Next, we explained the concept of ethical principles in business ethics. We also described how ethical standards impact the various functions of marketing. Then, we talked about the special considerations affecting ethical behavior in a global economy. Finally, we discussed the best way to analyze ethical problems and understood methods for making a firm more responsive to ethical matters. And these are the three books from which the material for this uh, module was taken. Thank you.